Hi, we are up to module 10 in our chemistry textbook, and we are now moving away from the geometry of molecules into a different type of chemical reaction. So far, we've learned about formation reactions, decomposition, and one other one that is escaping me right now. But the next type of reaction we're going to learn about is um, between acids and bases. So, module 10 is about acid-base chemistry, and here are some of the characteristics of compounds that are acids. They taste sour, they are covalent compounds that conduct electricity in water, they turn blue litmus paper, which is an indicator, red, and we will talk more about what an indicator is in a moment. And they are molecules that donate an, a hydrogen ion, written H+. Now, if you think about what, an, what a hydrogen ion is, it is an atom that is only a proton, right? There's no electron. So we can also think of H+, this ion, as a proton. Therefore, a molecule that donates H+, is basically donating a proton. So you can talk about it either way. So we call it a pro, we call an acid also a proton donor. Okay. On the flip side, bases taste bitter. They are slippery to the touch when they're dissolved in water. They turn red litmus paper blue, and they are molecules that accept the H plus ion or a proton. So they are called proton acceptors. And then an indicator is a substance that can help to identify an acid or a base. This is a substance that turns one color in the presence of acids and it turns another color in the presence of bases. So litmus paper is an indicator. And I believe if you do the um, experiments in your textbook, you use litmus paper. Or another indicator, a natural one, is cabbage juice. And I believe that is used in another experiment in this module. So now I need to give you some examples of acids and bases and how they work together. So here in Michigan, just making conversation while I erase, it is uh, 2019 and it has been quite a winter. This is our, well, for the schools in the area, this is our eighth snow day in, I believe, about uh, 10 school days. So there's been a lot of time off around here. But not for us homeschoolers. We keep plugging along because we want our time off to be in June, don't we? Or maybe even May. All right, here's an example of an acid-base reaction. HCl plus H2O yields. Have you guys missed chemical reactions? So have I. So good to get back into them. Yields H3O plus, which by the way, you should know this ion H3O plus is known as the, oh shoot, what's it called? Ah, it's escaping me. There's a name for that. I gotta look it up in just a second. Plus CL minus. Okay, um, so let's write out the Lewis structure to see what's going on in this reaction. HCl, Cl with its six other electrons, and then H2O, H, O, H, and O with its two other, well, with its four other electrons. Okay, yields the, oh, I remember, hydronium. Hydronium ion is H3O plus. Okay, 
All right, now looking at this uh, molecule right here, this is a covalent bond. Let's take some notes about it. The shared electrons in this covalent bond spend most of their time spend most of their time around what? You tell me. Would they spend most of their time around hydrogen or chlorine? Which is a more electronegative? Which is farther to the right on our beloved table? That's right, chlorine. Spend most of their time around chlorine. So, hydrogen wants, I love how we refer to our atoms and our electrons as actual individuals. Personification, that is. So, hydrogen wants a fairer share of electrons. So, it leaves as an H plus ion and goes to share electrons with a lone pair uh, on oxygen on the H2O molecule. Okay, there's a nice little paragraph that we just wrote together, right? So it's explaining what's happening here. If the electrons are spending most of their time around chlorine, right? Hydrogen says, this is not fair. I'm not getting any electrons. Hey, what's that over there? Look at that lone pair of electrons just hanging out. I'm gonna go share with this molecule and share that lone pair on oxygen right there. All right, so then it becomes, we gotta draw a picture of that. So then we have the chlorine ion because the chlorine is left with all eight of the electrons because it, it kept the electron of hydrogen. So chlorine is now a negative ion. Hydrogen is now a positive ion because it took off and left its electron behind. And then here's our water molecule. And the hydrogen sees its opportunity and goes over here. So that's what's happening. And then this is why this reaction yields a hydronium ion. So we write it out like that. And a chlorine ion. Okay, so there in pictures is what happened. So now let's label which was the acid and which was the base in this reaction. So we're gonna look at the reactants and decide which acted as the acid and which acted as the base. Okay, I'm gonna write it out again in um, formulas. So we had HCl plus H2O yields H3O positive and Cl negative, okay? What happened with the HCl was that HCl donated an H plus ion, or it donated a proton. Who donates protons? That's right, acids, because it donated H plus, or a proton. I hope you can see that. Okay, what did the H2O do? The H2O accepted H plus. In other words, or I'm going to put um, slash a proton. Who accepts protons? 
That's right, bases do. So the H2O acted as the base. Okay, I hope you can see that. So there's an example of an acid-base reaction. And we're just gonna do one more real quick. Quick, Carly, quick. You only got 15 minutes or YouTube won't let you post your video. Okay, quickly, one more example of this, labeling acids and bases. Okay, our new reaction is, um, okay, our new example is H2O plus NH3 yields NH4 plus and OH negative, which if you learned your, um, oh, I keep blanking on names. Anyway, you should have learned that this is called the hydroxide ion, OH negative. So which is acid, which is the base, is the question that we're asking, okay? Well, we can see right here that this time, H2O changes from H2O to OH negative. So what happened? H2O donated H plus, or a proton. Which means this time water acted as the acid, okay? What happened with NH3? NH3 became NH4 plus, so NH3 uh, accepted a proton, making it a base in this reaction, okay? Notice that in our first example, water acted as a base. In this example, water acted as an acid. H2O is one of those special molecules, first of all, because it's delicious and so refreshing, and secondly, because it can act as an acid, A-C-I-D, or base. There's a special word for these type of compounds. We call these compounds called an amphiphrotic or amphoteric compound. Two weird adjectives for you to learn right there, okay? But that's what we call a compound that can act as either an acid or a base. I've always learned it as amphoteric, so this is the one I remember, but you can also um, hear it as amphiphrotic, okay? So that is your introduction to acids and bases.